Good morning. This is Roxanne, retired teacher, ready to share another story. This one, after you hear it, uh, will hopefully motivate you to make sure you're brushing those pearly whites morning and night for sure. Don't forget to floss. Here we go. It's George Washington's teeth. What a thunk, huh? This is by Deborah Chandra and Madeline Komora, and it's pictures by Brock Cole. So here we have George Washington's teeth. All of his life, George Washington had problems with his teeth, and he worked hard to save them. This story is based on what really happened to George and his teeth. The Revolutionary War George hoped would soon be won, but another battle with his teeth had only just begun. George Washington rushed into town. The dentist heard his shout. Hold still, he said, then gave a yank. A rotten tooth popped out. All that night, George tossed and moaned. Another tooth was sore, but at the dawn, he saddled up and galloped off to war. George reached, reached New York as British ships invaded every port. Preparing for a fierce attack, his soldiers built a fort. Inside, he rubbed his swollen gums with soothing oil of myrrh until a sentinel cried out, Here come the British, sir. Charging on the field, George thought, There's something in my mouth. He spat into his handkerchief. Another tooth came out. This can't be happening, George gasped. What if someone should see? If word got out, I'm losing teeth. My men would laugh at me. While no one looked, he wrote a note his dentist would receive. Please come, it said. I'll need your help when I get home on leave. Back at home, George lost more teeth till he had only ten. Oh, Martha, dear, George cried. I fear I'll never eat again. She fed him mush and pickled tripe, but when guests came to dine, he sneaked one of his favorite nuts. Then he had only wine. George crossed the icy Delaware with nine teeth in his mouth. In that cold and pitchy dark, Two more teeth came out. Snow fell on George at Valley Forge. His blue coat hung in tatters, but then he'd only seven teeth that couldn't even chatter. <sighs> Yet bravely George led forth his men, coat and pigtail flying, while cannons boomed he held his jaw and groaned, I think I'm dying. And if you've ever had a bad toothache, which I hope you haven't, and I hope you don't, it is pretty painful. The Redcoats fled, George won the war. When he returned alive, Martha checked for seven teeth, but counted only five. He hid the evening of her ball, ashamed his friends would see. That night the dentist came again. George lost another three. Poor George had two teeth in his mouth. The day the votes came in, the people had a president, but one afraid to grin.
he does look pretty serious in all of his portraits that I've seen. A portrait artist came to George. He said, I know a trick. I'll pad your mouth with cotton balls to puff your sunken lips. George stood up to have a look. He fell back on his fanny. It doesn't look like me, he groaned. It looks like Martha's granny. He yanked the cotton from his mouth and gasped, oh, what have I done? The cotton held a rotten tooth. Now George had only one. George still had that tooth the night. A knock came at the door. I brought false teeth, the dentist called. Teeth that won't get sore. George put them in, but when he smiled, springs snapped against his tongue. Out flew those teeth. Ah! George shrieked. They've knocked out my last one. So now he has absolutely no teeth left. Oh no, George moaned, I'm toothless. He kept his mouth shut tight. He couldn't sleep. He paced the floor and prayed with all his might. If only I had teeth, thought George. He pondered what to do. Ah, he cried, all my old teeth might help me make some new. He searched Mount Vernon's bedchambers, the pantry, parlors, halls, through shelves, desk drawers, and the musky floor of every horse's stall. So he's looking for his teeth that fell out. He's hoping he can use them to make some dentures. George found no teeth. Alas, they're gone. A great sob shook his shoulders. Through tears he peered in one last chest, leaped up and yelled, my molars! With plaster and those teeth he found, George poured a sample mold that showed the dentist how to make false teeth George, George hoped would hold. The dentist took strong hippo tusk and carved a set to size. Each tooth secured with screws of gold that lit up George's eyes. Can you guess the story's end? Those new teeth fit just fine. And round the ballroom with his friends, George danced all through the night. So he was happy that he finally had a teeth, even though they weren't his own, but he was able to eat again. And then in the back, and I'm not going to read it all, but in the back we see an actual timeline. A timeline tells us important events in a person's life or in, uh, in uh, important events in say your city or your country. It has dates on it. That's how you can tell it's a timeline. It'll have a date and then a little box that tells you something important that happened either to that city, that state, that country, or uh, a lot of times uh, people. And this is a timeline of George and his teeth and what happened throughout his life with his teeth. So that is called a timeline and it is in chronological order. Chronological order means in the order that things happen. So if you were going to do a timeline of your day, you would start off with the morning and then you would go into your uh, mid-afternoon or afternoon, mid-afternoon, evening, and that way you would keep all the events in order. And here's a picture of his actual teeth. Uh, his, his, uh, not his real teeth, but 
his dentures that he finally had made. So, and they were gold, they had gold in them. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this story about George and his teeth. And I hope that this motivates you to make sure you're brushing uh, in the morning and at night. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it and have a great day. Until next time. Bye, Jasper.